Welcome to Tor Valley Microgreens. I'm Cassandra and I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to show you around and share what we have in the making. What we have is a microgreen farm. It really is a micro business at the moment. Innovation and farming is important, not just to me, not to the land, but to the populations who live in our urban centers who are so dependent on food producers like ourselves. Come with me, I'm gonna take you on a little tour, walk and talk tour. So we had an existing structure here, which was a disused stable yard. This is a really protected little valley. So putting a polytunnel up here with the North Devon winds kind of made sense. And this is our storeroom, our indoor grow room, and our preparation room. It's looking a little bit bare right now, but I have been busy this morning since early cutting and preparing some of our orders for the weekend. This is Tor Valley Microgreens. We're in the polytunnel where it's kind of the heart of the business. I grow tiny little green things that don't take much to produce. We use a mix of organic compost and sterilized grit in a very shallow base in a plastic tray, which is reusable. We're kind of trying our level best to be the change that is necessary today. But I also have this passion to ensure that there is fresh food grown locally for local communities. And three years ago, if you had seen my life compared to what it is now, I think it would have been a very, very different picture. I was teaching yoga in East Devon. My mum was living on this land and we had just come through a couple of lockdowns and we needed to do something. And my son in South Africa said, mum, why don't you grow microgreens? And I'm going, what is a microgreen? And he's going, don't you remember? I did some volunteering on a microgreen farm when I was training and I went, kind of do. He said, they're little green things that get supplied to any chef that's worth their weight in salt. And I went, okay, great. We've got lots and lots of pubs and lots and lots of restaurants in this area. Maybe that's an idea. And so Microgreens, Tor Valley style was born. So 80% of the land has been left to nature. We're making space for nature and there is the most incredible biodiversity happening here. All the rain that we've been receiving is kind of softening the earth and we will have amazing wildflowers which some people consider weeds, but we believe are medicinal and have their place. Come with me and I'll show you the potty tunnel. So in here is where it all really happens. It's a vertical farm situation. These are my little mini micro fields of green. I have got heat trays that are fed through a closed circuit system that is utilizing our regenerative compostable waste, which all these root systems are. We grow in organic compost with sterilized grit, it's a soil mix, and that then gets put into our heat stack, which is kind of like a big haystack, but in the center there's some very fancy piping. If you go down here, you can see the copper piping. That's Bill, he's on guard, he's our head of rodent control. Um, but come on through and have a look at the little pump system. Come autumn, we will be gearing up with a whole lot of more composting from our local neighboring farmers who have liveries and chicken runs. So we take their organic matter as well. We were approached kind of April last year, exactly a year ago, by someone from the Plymouth University. And he started talking to me about Agritech and applying for a grant that was available through the Devon County Council. And what would we need in order to make our life as farmers in Devon easier and probably more modernized? And I'm going, wow, okay, he's talking robotics. He's talking all this high tech stuff and I just need power. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. We don't even have energy. We don't even have a source of power except for one little cable that feeds from the main house, which is 150 meters away. And I need lighting, I need heating, I need all of this stuff because it is controlled environment growing that we're involved with here. So what we, what we kind of chatted about was 
an experimental heat stack source using our waste. Basic power needs like solar panels, would that be agri-tech? And he goes, absolutely, Cass. It is agri-tech. It might be low-tech, but it is agri-tech. We got the guys in from the energy company through the North Devon biosphere. I, I reached out to them and I said, I need help with putting this thing together. So Tom and Martin from 361 Energy came on board and they've been fantastic with helping us actually engineer this heat source. So thank you so much, Devon County Council, for coming on board with us. The team have been really great. What you can see here are our flood trays. So I'm able to water en masse. These are wheatgrass. So we just let them soak. The root systems are underneath and they are thirsty, so they soak up all the water. And after about 30 seconds, I just take them off and let them drain. So we don't use much water. We can produce an enormous amount of food. We're kind of running on about, I would think about 40% of capacity at the moment, but it is the beginning of the season. And I know that as the summer opens up and the hospitality industry opens up, I am going to be run off my feet. So come with me. Edible flowers. What I've got in my hand is a probe that is going to measure the internal temperature in this really sad looking um, heat stack. Over the winter, when we first had it constructed, we were getting temperatures of 38 degrees from the inside, and that then feeds the water all the way down underground into the potty tunnel into the heat stacks. We were one of 14 lucky farmers who got the grant, and as uh, you can see up here, we've now got eight solar panels, and that delivers about 3,000 um, kilowatts of power to our cabin and to our polytunnel. Yeah, that's pretty much all that we need at the moment. Obviously, I've got plans to expand, um, but the whole idea is that I want hubs to kind of spring up around Devon, around the southwest, microgreen hubs where local communities take ownership of their food production. That's kind of the big picture. I think for anyone involved in food production today, you cannot do it alone. You have got to, we have got to make use of the technology that is out there. The answers to our future food security lie in utilizing this amazing, innovative opportunity that exists. And farmers have got to come together and we've got to share best cases, which is what is happening, which is why I'm so excited to be part of this little team. Um, there are 14 local farmers and we have formed um, a scoping committee. So we're kind of consulting in conjunction with the tech guys from the university down in Plymouth um, and with the team from Devon County Council. And together, we're trying our level best to make a difference, and it's gonna happen. So my parents moved onto this land pretty much halfway through 2006, and these were just farm fields. They decided that planting trees would be a really good idea. So over the course of 15 years, they planted more than 150 trees, most of which have survived. And on my right, there's a little brook that runs for most of the year. You can see the daps. You've actually chosen the right day to come out. When they're gone, then the bluebells come out. We've got an empty beehive that's waiting for some wild British bees to come. But if the domestic bees choose, they can have a home there. We are not too fussy. It's just we're not going to cultivate honey commercially. And then just because I absolutely adore bamboo, uh, bamboo produces 35% more oxygen than a single oak tree. So I guess this is really important for the environment and for saving the planet. But all of this really was a selfish endeavor to start with. It was just my appreciation of natural wild spaces. I come from Africa um, and I have to have that around me. I've just been really, really fortunate enough that my mum and her husband feel pretty much the same way as I do. It doesn't look like much, but these are nettles that we harvest. 
we make pesto out of nettle and we dry it for tea and it's got some really super beneficial medicinal qualities so yeah this is the medicine meadow not only for us who live here but for the animals that inhabit if you look up over there that was the original polytunnel that we started with and then across to the left, there's the little greenhouse. So it was this party tunnel, that greenhouse where everything started, and that's where we've grown to. We're up to about 40% capacity. So who knows? Maybe we will get up to about 70% capacity and yeah, offer grow your own workshops, experiences for people who wanna come and soak up the beautiful natural world that North Devon has to offer. This is Hedgehog Central. It is where all the garden waste comes and we just leave it. So nature does its thing. And the little animals are pretty happy with it. So I guess there's a load of dormice and probably a couple of slow worms and maybe even some adders. But I'm okay with all of it because literally this is their spot. I want this to be a sanctuary for wildlife. And I also think it's important that we can show how it can be done. This is such a small scale and I know that there's talk about extending hedgerows um, and farmers taking ownership of that and that's a beautiful start. I think it's a necessity that we come together and face the looming food crisis as a whole and the only way to do that is to form a loose alliance and it doesn't have to be something that is heavy or um, admin based it really is ideas sharing and um, community building so we're really passionate as a team as a as a uh, a loose alignment and association. We're passionate about the future of farming and kind of turning it into something that is attractive, that will draw younger generations to be inspired, to come on board um, and to have hope. It's a no brainer. You don't have to do it on your own. You have a choice and I've made my choice and I know a lot of us are looking at ways to make farming more appealing, easier and more productive. So that is the no-brainer, you've got to use Agritech.